gotta hit the brakes real hard. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jungle Jordan rolling here in style. We are at the Maryland Zoo in Druid Hill Park. I'm so excited. We are in Baltimore. I've never been here. I'm so excited to go in. We have some special encounters ready for the day. I'm excited. Let's have some fun. Let's go in. Okay, you guys, we are here at the Lion Overlook to check out some of those cool lions. And we have one of the keepers here in front of us. Who are you? Uh, my name is Mackenzie, and I am one of the lion keepers here at the Maryland Zoo. That's awesome. So who do we have behind us? And we'll say hi real quick to the other keepers behind us. <laughs> Um, who are the lions and who are the keepers behind us? So the keeper right here, this is Erica. She is also one of our other lion keepers as well. Uh, the beautiful lion in front of us, her name is Zuri. And our manager is also over here as well. His name is Ryan. And he is going to maybe try and catch the male if he also wants to come over and train with us. So how old is Zuri? Zuri is eight years old. Um, Hassan, who you cannot see right now, he is 15. He just turned 15 in the summer. Um, she will actually be nine years old in September. And they are not a breeding pair currently. They are actually just a companion pair. So you said the boy's name was Hassan. Hassan. So yes. I know a Hassan. <laughs> I know a Hassan too. Yes, the one that used to work here, Hassan. Yes. Okay. Um, Hassan is a, is a keeper that used to work here. Um, by the time this comes out, I can probably leak this. He's coming yeah. back. Here. He's gonna be working here. So he is here right now, but I'm not gonna see him because this is in the future. Anyways, okay. so what is Zuri doing right now? So Zuri is training for an injection lineup. So she will go between here and the log that you see behind her. And Erica will come in, ask her to lay down. And if she's laying down and calm, we can actually do some touches back in her hip um, to prepare for an injection. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So what were the steps to get Zuri ready for this type of training? So there are a lot of steps that we take when we are training this kind of behavior. Usually we just prepare for a lineup. So we kind of guide them into the direction we want. We'll usually use something like a log like this so we can create a shoot system and it makes it easier for the animal to just kind of line up. Um, we will practice a lay down behavior, which usually just consists of asking them to, you know, kind of just sit um, and they will get positively reinforced with that, with food. And then we'll kind of ease on into that with a second person. So usually a second person will then be involved and kind of be over near her hip area. Okay. So this, she is a very big cat. Um, I'll ask really quick, you know, how much does she weigh? You know, how strong do you think she is? And, and I'm asking those questions because working with a big cat like this, it's not like working with your little tabby kitty at home. Right, so right. what are the challenges with that? So the challenges um, present itself in different ways depending on where they are. So on exhibit, you can see that we do kind of have this mesh here. Um, we can ask them to stand up even though they weigh, she weighs about 350 pounds. So they are pretty large animals. Mm -hmm. Definitely because they do weigh so much, we have different precautions that we take. And usually there are always two keepers present when we are doing any type of training. Right. Mm -hmm. With is that is that something throughout the zoo with all the carnivores, all the all the big cats or So usually the animals that we deem a red or dangerous animal. So we do have a couple of those animals like bears and leopard. Um, and we always have just two people in the presence or in the building mm -hmm. with those animals, just in case if anything were to ever happen. Um, and we do use a two key system. So Erica today actually will hold a different set of keys and a different set of locks than I do. She has to follow um, behind yes. you. So yeah. she has to open different doors before right. I can open a different door. Uh, so we really take every precaution we can with a dangerous animal like Safety this. Safety is very yeah. important. Absolutely, yeah, especially uh, with these animals. So as we're as we're doing this whole thing so far, I'm just hearing little grunting, low grunting sounds <laughs> from her now. How would you describe those those little sounds that we're hearing from Zuri? What what do those grunts mean? So they could honestly mean a different variety of things, in my opinion. Um, usually, we are hearing those things if we are getting a little bit of frustration, um, if they are vocalizing because they would be more excited or they're enjoying the training. Um, it's definitely different with every animal. I would say with her, sometimes it's a little bit of sassiness that she's <laughs> that she's giving us during the training sessions. Uh, but yeah, it can definitely be different with every animal. I've worked with a lot of cats. Yes. Um, and, I can, and, I, and I can tell you, um, I've always had more interesting times with the lady cats. I'm just going to say that. Yes, they, they have definitely. They a little bit of sass. Yes, you know, yes. 
They well, have personalities. They're are, the ones that have to do, you know, kind of all the work. They do. So strong they, personalities? Yes, they have to have strong personalities. I love sure. that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So I want to learn a little bit more about you. We've talked yeah. about Zuri here. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Why did you come here? Why did you enter the zoo field? What's going on? Uh, that was probably one of my favorite questions. Um, I started here about four years ago, I'm coming up on four years, um, but I really just wanted to move out of my hometown. So I did start at another zoo in Pennsylvania, where I'm originally from, um, and that was really just where I wanted to go. I didn't want to live in my hometown anymore, you know, very close with my family and stuff, but I still wanted to experience a larger zoo. So I definitely, I came from a smaller institution um, and I worked there for about four years, but there we had giraffe, we had some things that I work with as well. When I was looking for another job, I really wanted to do, or I wanted to work at a larger institution um, with larger carnivores and things like that that I didn't have the opportunity to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so I sought out this team specifically, um, mm. and my team actually consists of lions, cheetahs, giraffes, so I have, yeah, I have a nice variety of animals that I take care of. And uh, I really do enjoy just getting that different variety, and that's what I was seeking out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Did you see my glasses? I did see your glasses. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you know my favorite animal? Is it cheetah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just, uh, once you said that, I immediately uh, decided to become best friends with you, if that's okay. That's okay. So, cool. <laughs> so uh, I have another important question I like to ask all the keepers that I meet, you know, we work with these animals, we spend a lot of time with these animals, and I just want to ask, what do these animals mean to you? How important is our animals like Zuri to you? So these guys mean the world to us, and I know that you can probably relate to that as well. Um, I definitely got into this job because I cared about conservation, education, just getting that word out there and really spreading the love for exotic animals. Um, I've had animals growing up my entire life, you probably did too, um, and I really just kind of got to know animals more than I knew people and I got into this job because these guys really need a voice and we are their voice. So they mean the world to me. I'd be here 24-7 if I needed to, 365. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I like watching people um, give that answer because they, you can see how they, you know, they light up. Light up. Like, I can see it in you. That's that's why. Because <laughs> this field is filled with such a passionate group of people. It's like it's yeah. so important to us. Like we actually mean this. Honestly, if we didn't need money to survive, I feel like a lot of us would do it for free. Absolutely. But that being said, we need money, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you all for uh, watching this video. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us, Mackenzie. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And um, I'm ready to go see the next animal. I think if there is something else. Yes, there are other animals. Okapi. Okay, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I didn't hear anything you just said. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>